All right, well, we'll start, I guess. Okay. Okay, um, we shall reconvene. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, how about a motion to reconvene the meeting? A second from someone? Okay, all in favor? Great. Okay. So when we left off, uh, we, the hearing of visitors, Mr. Sullivan pointed out, and we, we did that. So the next item on our uh, agenda is the consent agenda. It is the bundling of certain routine business of the school committee. At this time, any school committee member can take a, uh, an item or items out for individual or group discussion. Would anyone care to remove any item or items for uh, discussion? Seeing none, then could someone make a motion to approve consent agenda A through K? Motion to approve consent agenda A through K. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Okay, communication. Um, with uh, communication, the Elections Commission request to use the school as a polling location. Um, uh, last week, as everyone on the committee knows, we had a, a meeting with regard to facilities and, and the issue of um, a request by the uh, registrar voters to use the Angelo School for a future voting location. At that meeting, we discussed with uh, the superintendent and um, Deputy Thomas to have a meeting with um, the registrar of voters uh, to get a, a better sense of what she was looking for and to inform her that the Angelo was not really conducive. They had a very good meeting. Um, the registrar of voters removed, removed her request and we'll be working with Mr. Thomas in the future. Um, it looks like uh, there's a couple of possibilities. The Ashfield School might work out, may work out, um, and or uh, another location. Mr. Sullivan, what was the other location that you had recommended? Crosby Gardens. Crosby Gardens. So uh, we do not have to take any um, action on that uh, request as it was uh, rescinded, and there'll be future discussion and visits with regard to the voter registration. Uh, uh, with, with the registrar of voters for um, future um, voting at a, at, a, at a site within Ward 6 because it is a, a request for a precinct uh, for Ward 6. So um, that being said, I, I don't think we really need a vote on anything except to... Uh, uh, no, I don't think we need a vote on that. That's just basically a communication. So next item on the agenda, report of superintendent of schools. Okay. Madam Superintendent, the okay, floor and, is yours. And I do, um, Mr. Minicello, have uh, two items of communication. Um, I did receive a note I want to share with you. It says to the superintendent of Brockton Schools, Kathleen A. Smith, and the school committee, on behalf of my family and myself, I want to thank you for taking the time to recognize my husband, Kyle Landerholm, for all his hard work and time spent with the children of Brockton. He loved sharing his knowledge of the history of Brockton, especially to the young people. Thank you also for the beautiful flowers that you gave me. Sincerely, Diane Landerholm. And also, uh, I would like you to know that we did receive communication from uh, Commissioner Jeff Riley. As you can remember, last fall we had a uh, water main break uh, at the Downey School. We had to cancel school for the day. As we come up upon our last day of school, uh, which is scheduled right now for a half day on Wednesday, June 19th, we still had to deal with the loss of that day for the Downey. We asked the commissioner to waive the day and allow us to have the Downey students that day go, not just the half day, but the full day of school. So they will be the only school that has a full day on Wednesday, June 19th. There will be a full lunch, there'll be activities. I know Principal John Kelly is reaching out to the families, making sure that although the rest of the district is a little different, we um, fully um, understand that that will be a full day. I wanna thank the commissioner for working with us. Coming back for an additional day would be a hardship um, as far as opening school, uh, not being able to move forward with some of our uh, plans that we have for professional development with staff, et cetera. So again, uh, that was good news that we just received and we're moving forward to inform um, the families. And uh, next, I also want to share with you, we all attended uh, graduation uh, on Saturday and first of all, we're so fortunate that the weather, at least in my six years, the weather has been beautiful, sometimes a little warm. Uh, Saturday was just one of those days you actually could feel the breeze. Um, this was just an exceptional class 
uh, that we just saw tonight, so many wonderful things, how they represented us uh, in the city with their academics, their sports, their drama, their artistic talents, uh, you know, so many things. But I want to share this with you, and I'm going to give this to M Mrs. Campbell to actually pass around. So I did receive, and if you listen to uh, Dr. Cliff Murray's speech on Saturday, he did reference one of our students who actually sent in a speech to possibly be chosen uh, as the student, I don't think I ever say this right, salutorian? Yeah, salutorian. So, salutorian. Mm -hmm. so this is a young man that had many challenges, and yet I think it is worthwhile for you to hear uh, what was said. So the mom wrote to me, uh, Stacy Wright, this is student Anthony Wright. She said, I just want to share this with all of you. Anthony wrote a speech, and she informed me that he wrote this himself. And he did audition to be the keynote speaker at graduation, and someone else was chosen. But she did not want this speech to go unread. She truly talks about how indebted they are because of the progress that Anthony made, what a wonderful experience he had at our high school. And I would like to read his speech. So it says, hello, and welcome to the graduation for the class of 2019. Today is not only a special day for us students, but it's a special day for the families, teachers, and staff members who have helped prepare us for this day. My name is Anthony Wright. Some of you may know me and are aware that I have autism. For me, my family didn't know if this day would be today or three years from now, but I made it with the help of so many of you. Class of 2019, we have been working our whole lives for this moment. We earned this. We deserve this. I'm not here to deliver a speech about myself and having autism, but a speech about any student who is struggling with some type of obstacle. Never let it hold you back or make you feel like less of a person. Continue to push yourself out of your comfort zones because this is how you will find out how truly amazing you are. There were days that were tough, but with the support of all the great staff here at Brockton High School, they helped me and you get through many difficult times. The support of family, friends, teachers, coaches, counselors, and countless others has helped us to get where we are today. Maybe it was the boxer football players and cheerleaders who sat with you every day at lunch your freshman year so that you never had to eat alone. Or maybe it was the superintendent who came to visit you at your new job. Or maybe it was the director of special education who helped you get that job. Or being part of the track team with the boxer buddies. Or it could have been your teachers and guidance counselors who went above and beyond to make sure you were on the right track. Maybe it was the nurses and paras who were always there helping and taking care of you. Or maybe it was a teacher who wasn't even your own teacher but had one of your siblings and saw your potential and made you feel special. All of these things happened to me. And I am sure most of you has, have had some very similar experiences. Maybe the drama club, arts department, or one of your sports coaches that inspired you to be the best person you could be. Or was it a teacher from your freshman year that told you a story about a cousin who wanted to be a lawyer that made you want to study harder? A desire to be the first one in your family to graduate or be the fourth child to make it to college? or you just wanted to prove that just because you have a diagnosis or some type that you will graduate and will go on to college. We all need a little push to show our true potential. I am graduating today alongside all of you, thanks to my family and all the amazing staff here at Brockton High School. And this is a quote, at BHS, your differences don't matter or define you. Our differences define Brockton High School a place where it does not matter if you are autistic or athletic or artistic, you are a boxer. These last four years have gone by in the blink of an eye. In that time, it has made us mature and grow. Brockton High has helped us better ourselves and prepare us for the next chapter in our lives. The future is holding great things for all of us. Our desires have pushed, pushed us to where we want to be. All of us here today probably can't believe that this is happening. All the memories and friends I have made will be in my heart forever. Class of 2019, we did it. We made four years of high school worth it. Wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. In the words of Walt Disney, if you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you. And I really thought that that was worth, I think it sums up 
our students at Brockton High School, whether they are number one in the class and maybe weren't challenged, uh, or maybe a student that considered themselves having a, a diagnosis, as he said, and being able to overcome that, you know, from all of the support that he received. So on behalf of all of us and uh, those that certainly uh, listen to that, you know, understand that that's what makes Brockton High so great. So thank you, and I'm glad I had a chance to, to share that. Um, I also want to inform you that uh, we do have, uh, this is very special to me, we do have a new director of community schools, and that is going to be uh, Dr. Soraya DeBarros. Um, I'm sure you're surprised. I mean, she's been at the Parent Information Center for a number of years. Uh, she wanted a new challenge. I think uh, community schools is coming into um, a, a new era. I think there are a lot of wonderful things that are happening. It's probably going to, to see a change in offerings, and I'm really pleased that Dr. DeBarros will be leading community schools. Uh, also, I want to thank everybody for last night. A number of you were able to come to the city council meeting. I have to tell you, it did feel very different than the two hours it usually takes us to present. I had a mandate that we were going to be coming on after the mayor, and we needed to move quickly as they have three long nights coming up. And of course, we had just been before them two weeks previous and were able to share with them our state of the schools. So we did present our budget. Um, you would think that we had a wonderful budget. I want to remind everybody we still have a $4.8 million deficit, but we also have um, opportunities looking at the state uh, with the House and the Senate budgets moving through. We're going to be meeting with our legislative delegation to truly talk about those um, additional funds that matter to the Brockton Public Schools as we continue to move forward and build back our district. There were very thoughtful questions last night. I want to thank the City Council for giving us the opportunity. There are lots of accolades because they know what we do in supporting our youngsters to make sure that what you saw there tonight happens for students all over our district, from our youngest students to tonight watching a student graduate who was able to take part Saturday. I'm not sure I would have done that, but took part he did and, and had honors that he brought home. And I thought tonight was wonderful that everybody uh, actually uh, took part in, in his little graduation ceremony, and that was Jordan Williams this evening. So we we're very pleased to be able to do that. Um, as far as advocacy, uh, we do have a, we're trying to come up with a date in the next couple of weeks before, as I said, the Senate and House go into their compromise committee. We want to make sure they truly understand our challenges as we are right now, almost, uh, I, actually it still is the beginning of June. I was going to say the middle of June. And, sorry, Mr. Minicello, I have to share my book with you it's over okay. here. Don't rush the month. I know. Why would I do that? So um, I want to actually take the seat over there and also talk about the kudos that we have in the district. So you're not going to see this on that, but before I go there, I want to tell you that I did have an opportunity uh, last week on May 30th to go to the Alumni Awards Ceremony. And this is something, and I want to thank Bob Saltzman, uh, and I want to thank all our alumni that continue to try to grow that organization. If you are out there and you're an alumni, please get involved. It's worth it. You know, we want you to come back. As we said, you know, once you're a boxer, you're always a boxer. There are so many ways to support us, even just by being involved. So there were four uh, student scholarships given out, and of course there were many student scholarships. We saw that in the book uh, at our graduation. And scholarships were to Alexis Adozi, uh, Aaron Hamlin, Elaine Rodriguez, and Alexandra Yunus uh, from the past group. And I want to congratulate the honorees, the alumni honorees this year, our own Mike Brady, class of 1980, Aloic Osumbo, who actually came before you. He was the class of 2011. He actually um, is a nurse practitioner and wrote the book about the male nurse practitioner that he read to a lot of our younger students in the district. And the most fascinating was one of our graduates from 1950, a gentleman in his 80s that he was so proud to tell us, a Leo Narducci, um, who is a famous fashion designer. I see uh, Richard Bath sitting up there, uh, just retired as professor at LaSalle College. And when I said to Richard, I never heard of Leo Narducci, he said, you never did. 
He was very involved, I know, with Richard and LaSalle and the wonderful programs that they have there. So thank you to our, our alumni for recognizing great individuals. And also today we had, and it's interesting that Saturday we graduate almost 1,000 students, and that is the end of our class of 2019. No sooner does that happen. And today we gave out book awards to our class of 20. 20. I can't believe we have a class of 2020 before us. So our juniors transitioning to be our new senior class when they come back. So we had book awards for 10 students from places like Harvard, Yale, Brown, Dartmouth, Wellesley College, Smith, Williams College, Boston College, Stonehill College, and Bay Path University. And these are the top students in our district. Uh, very proud. So I know you'll be pleased that, um, let me end the night by So these are happenings in our district this past week. So congratulations to our Brockton High School Drama Program, seven musical nominations for Newsies for the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild Met Awards. So they were actually practicing today when I was in the fine arts. So although Newsies happened during Mother's Day weekend, it continues on while they're vying for a number of nominations, one being Best Musical. So please keep your fingers crossed. We're excited about that happening. And next, there is our own Jordan Williams, who was the winner of the MIAA D1 pentathlon. Mr. Gormley, what is the pentathlon? The pentathlon is like the decathlon but with less events, and I don't know <laughs> which events you don't do. I, I'm trying to remember. I know they run the mile. They do the 110-meter hurdles, the high jump, the long jump, the uh, – I forget what else. <laughs> so five events? I think it's more than that. More than five Then What does that mean, pentathlon? You were laughing. Well, this, this is the young man I should again. know this. I, I, you should. <laughs> And the next one I think is also, yep, there is Jordan again, and this is who I spoke about a few minutes ago, who we were able to give um, the uh, high school diploma to just now. So he was the winner of the MIAA All-State Pentathlon held at Westfield State University, scoring 3,429 3, points on Saturday, June 1st, and now you understand why he was not able to be at his graduation. So congratulations to Jordan. One more thing, too. He broke the state record for the 400 meters. Uh, the On Saturday or? Past the Saturday before. Saturday before. Yeah. Quite, a week, quite a few weeks he's had. Well, I'm sure we'll continue to hear great things about him and so many of our athletes. And next, I have to tell you, this was something that we tried this year. This was a T held at the Hancock Elementary School. I also was able to do this at the uh, Kennedy uh, at the Gilmore this year. Um, Mr. Thomas, I hope next year you're going to continue in this tradition. So you'll have to have, what do you have, your iced coffee? We'll have iced coffee with the, uh, with the new superintendent. But this was a great opportunity. And when you talk about, you know, when we have the large forums, I think this is a little more intimate and an opportunity for parents to share you know, concerns about their children transitioning. And it is a great dialogue the parents have with each other. The one thing that I heard through and through was they were very pleased with the parents, the communication, the involvement in the school. So I want to thank Chartwells. You can see they put out tea, they put out goodies. You can't see it, but we actually have China that we're using, our beautiful white teacups. So it's really very elegant, and I want to thank everybody that took time out of their busy day to come and join us. And I think we have a group picture. So I want you to see Principal Steve Shaw that hosted this. You do see we had a dad at T. I want to point that out. Um, and, and again, this was a great group and uh, a lot of excellent conversation. Thank you, parents from the Hancock. Now, also, Vula Rumis and Gloria Chow were just named and received an award at the Matt Soul Conference last week for the recognition of their work with the Manthala George Jr. Global Studies School. I will be inviting them to come before you, probably our last school committee meeting on June 18th, but I wanted you to see that uh, this past week. And these are our Gata girls from the um, Angelo School on the run team competed in their 5K also on Saturday. Thank you to all the teachers there that support these young women uh, in leadership, in girl power, uh, what do they say? Gators got grit, we don't quit. Perfect. So congratulations to all of them. 
and tonight uh, I know that it's we still have some time everybody from 4 to 8 Ju is the, yeah, to Tuesday June 4th I'm sorry 4 to 10 at the Texas Roadhouse so it does support our CPAC and I know at our Special Olympics, I actually probably should have had pictures in there from that on uh, this past Wednesday, the mayor gave a check for $50,000, I believe from a block grant to support the playground that you know that Terry McIntosh from the CPAC came before you earlier in the year. So that's a wonderful kickoff to put towards uh, the playground so that all children have access to our playground. So thank you to them and we'll continue to support them. And that is my report for this evening. Thank you. Did I say the ditch? It's the Downey, correct? Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, the Downey School. Good. As you can see, there's lots happening in the district. Oh, and you have in front of you the postcards. Yep. So every year, Principal Nezrella, during April vacation, they take close to, was it close to 70 youngsters? With chaperones, with nurses. You know, all we ever hear is what a great time the kids have, how well-behaved they are. I love the postcards that they send us. They usually do Philadelphia, Washington, and New York, and continue to do that during the sixth and seventh grade. So there's great opportunities for our students to get out there and see our wonderful country. So thank you to everybody involved with that. Um, I know they always come before you. Usually next year you'll get a you'll get a slideshow about the trip to New York. Always a fun time. Um, any unfinished business? Any new business? Uh, no need for executive session. Okay. Um, anything before we wrap up, Ms. Sullivan? I just wanted to say um, for Anthony Wright, I've known the family f since he was in uh, first grade. They came to the church. He received all his sacraments at the church. He doesn't let anybody stop him. He also, I don't know if you remember, but when we were in the library for the New Heights Charter School, he was one of the speakers that spoke against the New Heights Charter School coming to Brockton. I can't, I didn't remember that. Yep. So he had no fear of public speaking, it sounds like. Nope. He was only in like the seventh or eighth grade then. Yep. He's quite a, he doesn't let anything He's, he's quite an accomplished young man. Do you think that maybe we could give him a certificate or invite him to? Would you like me to invite him to the June 18th? It's our last meeting of the year. I think that would be wonderful. I thought, I thought this was very, you know, heartfelt and uh, I think this was excellent. I, I'd love to give, meet him in person and give him a certificate. Yeah, I, I you know, again, I, I was sitting in my office the night I opened this up when the parents sent it and you know really makes you feel it really is what Brockton is all about and you know people need to understand that you know we make sure every child reaches their full potential and has opportunity and our students are the nicest today I did the freshman voices here we actually had it in this very place because we had MCAS testing going on in the usual area and I have to tell you Michelle Bolton was with me it was a great great group that were truly kind to each other, um, you know, wanted to take pictures, thought this was a wonderful event, you know, shared with us um, many things. They talked about freshman orientation, being nervous, you know, when they're for coming to Brockton High for the first time, I started to share some of it with Dr. Murray. Um, and you can imagine what that feels like walking into this high school for the first time, you know, coming from, you know, the Ashfield or the Plouffe, although we think those are good sized schools with almost 600 kids, you're walking into 4,200 kids here at Brockton High School, some quite a bit larger than you when you enter as a 14-year-old freshman, some 13-year-olds. So um, again, I, I just can't say enough about the students we have. It, it really is what makes us special. Four years goes by very quickly when you come to Brockton High, too quickly. Mm -hmm. so. so we will invite Anthony. Great, okay, anything else? All right, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you for attending. We are adjourned.